everybody! Welcome to Technique Tuesday. I am Anastasia Radloff, aka Stamp and Blondie, and I'm coming to you live this week on a special night to be able to bring you a really fun and easy technique. Now, normally I join you each week on Mondays for Makers Monday, but this week I decided to switch it up a little bit and bring you a really fun technique that anybody can create no matter what your skill level is. Now let me just make sure that I am live here on Facebook. If you're watching, comment, say hi, let me know that you're able to join me live. If you're watching this via replay or live on my, U on my yeah, YouTube page, uh, make sure to comment, say hi, and let me know that you were able to join me. So today I am dual streaming live here on Facebook and YouTube. So no matter where you're watching, you can join me live here this week. All right, hi, Carol. Hi, mom, hello. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Now today I'm gonna create two projects featuring the Forever Fern stamp set. This is a stamp set that's carrying over from our 2021-2022 annual catalog and will be featured in our 22-23 annual catalog. Now, right now is a big transition time. We have our retiring items from our annual catalog. We still have a month to go in our January through June mini catalog before those items are up for retirement. And it's just a crazy time to try to uh, prep and think of classes and Makers Mondays, Technique Tuesday projects for what I'm gonna be able to create right now. So a lot of items that I'm featuring are carrying over to our next annual catalog or they are in our January through June mini catalog. So today I'll be featuring the whitewash technique. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this two separate ways and it's very simple and it creates a really fun look to your projects. All right, it looks like I'm live. So let's go ahead and jump into a couple quick announcements before our projects. Oh, I hit the wrong button. Oh no, I always do this. There we go, okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, the first thing is our 21-22 annual catalog is retiring at the end of this month. So our last chance list, no, I'm not gonna go over all of this because this is a lot, but our last chance list of items are posted on the Stampin' Up! website. So as you're going through the website, uh, everything that is retiring will say retiring soon, and those items are all while supplies last. This is everything from stamp sets, bundles, punches, embellishments, and everything in between, but especially our 21, 23, sorry, 2020, 2022 in colors. So our Magenta Madness, Bumblebee, Just Jade, Cinnamon Cider, and Misty Moonlight, all those colors will be retiring at the end of this month. So last chance list everything as well supplies last our annual catalog ends on may 2nd so this is we're saying goodbye to our current annual catalog and we're saying hello to our may to june 2020 or sorry may to april 22 23 annual catalog now i can't show you the inside of this catalog just yet but there are some beautiful projects in here and i if you have not had a chance to look at my unboxing video i did last week of all new supplies that are coming in this catalog so if you scroll down the stamp and bondy page here on facebook you can see the video of all the new products that i got especially the in colors now every year i do something called my in color club and registration for this is now open it's five months and for each month you receive coordinating products for one of the in colors now this was a huge hit last year and i'm excited to bring it back and every month you'll receive coordinating products for one of the in colors. So one month you'll receive all Starry Sky products, the next month all Tahitian Tide, and so on and so forth. Now this is the perfect way to split up your purchases if you are either on a budget or if you're looking to get the new in colors little by little. 
So the In Color Club starts on May 1st. So you have until April 30th to register. Um, you receive a full package of cardstock, so 24 sheets of cardstock, a roll of a quarter, uh, sorry, one eighth of an inch metallic woven ribbon, uh, ink color baker's twine, a full size ink pad, re-inker, a stamp and write marker, two stamp and blends, 30 in color matte dots, eight pieces of six by six designer series paper, four pieces of in color glimmer paper, and four cards and envelopes from the T Boutique cards and envelopes pack, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> so you receive all of that each month, um, plus a st hand stamped card for myself featuring the color of the month and a surprise embellishment in your package each month. All the details on this will be in the link in the description of this video, but I wanted to show you guys the in colors for next year. So we have Starry Sky, Parakeet Party, Sweet Sorbet, Tahitian Tide, and Orchid Oasis. So these are the five 2022-2024 in colors. They stick around for two years. And these colors are what is going to be in our in color club. So all the details on what you receive will be in the link in the description of this video once I'm done here tonight. And um, sign up will end on April 30th. In Color Club is awesome. It, like I said, perfect way to budget your projects and your purchases over five months. And then after the end of five months, you have everything for the next two years for those colors. So beautiful, beautiful in colors. All right, uh, my Hello Ladybug class. I am gonna tell you guys, this is I have been getting an amazing response on this class. This is my highest selling class I have ever had. So thank you. <laughs> Registration for this class ends on Friday and that features the Hello Ladybug stamp set and the coordinating Hello Ladybug punch. Now you can add this bundle to your class registration when you register. It's $30 and you receive eight projects, uh, two each of four different designs, a full package of red rhinestone basic jewels, a Wink of Stella marker, and a full package of the alt, all here or all together, something like that, designer series paper. So our four projects that we're gonna create, we're gonna create a little bumblebee, this uh, Z fold project, um, this really fun black and white with pop of color and a punched project. So like I said, $30 and you receive all the supplies to create eight different or eight projects for different designs, two of each. Now this is a class to go, meaning you create it on your own schedule. There's no actual class date, but my highest ever selling class, Hello Ladybug, deadline to register is Friday. Link will be in the description of this video once I'm done here tonight. All right, last thing. Each week I do something called Prize Patrol. Now last week I had a have a paper pumpkin kit to give away. So actually released in our demonstrator updates this week, uh, apparently uh, May, is the day of hope in the United States. We have a day of hope. And this is actually the paper pumpkin hope box. So this hope box is meant to create these different projects and then you can put little trinkets or pro photos or little different things in the paper pumpkin box and gift it to somebody. So this was our prize patrol from last week. Includes a full roll of ribbon, stamp set, and mini ink pad. And the winner of our paper pumpkin box was Connie. So congratulations, Connie. I'm not sure if you're on here just yet, but I know she watches every week. So congratulations, Connie. You are a winner of our paper pumpkin box as our prize patrol from last week. Now this week's prize patrol is the Island Vibes stamp set. This is a really fun tropical stamp set that you can create these very distinctive images with. So the winner of this will receive the Island Vibes stamp set, 
for our prize patrol for this week. All you have to do is share this video, comment that you shared, and you'll be entered to win. Make sure you comment because sometimes your Facebook security settings don't always let me know if you have shared or not. So that is our prize patrol. <laughs> I love prize patrol too. It's my favorite each week to give it away. All right, this week, like I said, it's Technique Tuesday. So we are gonna create two projects featuring the whitewash technique. Now this is a subtle way to add a pop of white to your projects, and I'm gonna show you two different ways to do it. Now, you may be saying to yourself, hey, these colors I've never seen before. That is because I'll be creating this project with the 2224 in colors. So this is Starry Sky and Island, or sorry, Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky combined together. So you can see two of the projects that, uh, or two of the products that are in the new annual catalog. Now our first technique we're gonna do on this card here. Now don't forget, each week on my website, stampinblondie.com, I have a free project PDF tutorial. On here has all of the item names, item numbers, and the prices of the two projects that I'm gonna be creating here today, as well as the dimensions at the bottom for the projects. So you can pair this free project PDF tutorial with this video and create your projects each week for Technique Tuesday slash Makers Monday with me. Uh, feel free to post your projects on my Facebook group, Create with Stampin' Blondie. I love to see what you create each week. All right, our first project here today features the whitewash technique that is, um, this is the, of the two, let's say this is the most difficult, but it's not really difficult at all. So we have a piece of basic white cardstock, eight and a half by five and a half. Remember all those dimensions are on the PDF tutorial. Scored at four and a quarter. And we're gonna take our bone folder and crisp up our line here. Now this designer series paper is the artistically composed designer series paper. If you attended our uh, spring creative retreat, you have a package of this designer series paper, but we are gonna use actually the evening evergreen side here. So this we're just going to adhere down to our card base right in the middle. There we go. All right. This is soft succulent cardstock four by three. And I'm gonna bring in a piece of scratch paper cause we're gonna do some stamping here. Today I'm featuring the, like I mentioned earlier, the Forever Fern stamp set. This is what it looks like. This is in our current annual catalog and is carrying over to our next annual catalog. Hence the reason why I'm featuring it here today. And let me get all my supplies out for it. We're gonna be using Evening Evergreen ink and let me get the stamp. This big, this is the fern stamp that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna ink this up and we're actually gonna stamp it four times. So we're just gonna stamp it, ink it up, and we're gonna stamp right here in the corner, flip our stamp right here in the bottom right corner and then we're going to use our stamp to kind of fill in the spaces here so just flip it around there and once more right in the corner here all right so the whitewash technique if you've never done this technique before it's very very simple you only need for this way to do it two supplies the first is our Whisper White Craft Ink. So the difference between our regular refills and our Craft Ink is Craft Ink is a thicker ink. It is meant for embossing or the whitewash technique, but it is a way to stamp on darker paper and it is it takes a lot longer to dry. 
The best way to get this to dry if you are using it on uh, dark paper just by stamping is to heat emboss it because that's going to be the best way to get it to dry. So our craft stamp and ink, this can be purchased two ways in our annual catalog. Just the re-inker by itself or it comes with an uninked ink pad. So you would just take your white ink and add as much to it. Um, but I just have the refill bottle here. So I'm gonna take my Stampin' Block. Now this is, like I said, very thick ink. It's almost like um, whiteout, the traditional whiteout, not the little tape runners that we have nowadays. And we're gonna use a Stampin' Blending Pen. Now this is also found in our annual catalog. This is filled with glycerin and different substances. It's dual brush ended and it's meant to take your watercolor pencils and blend those harsh lines together. But we're gonna use it for the whitewash technique. So on my block, I have just a little bit of that craft ink and I'm just gonna pick a little bit up with my blending brush and paint right onto my leaves. Now, depending on how dark you want your whitewash to be, will determine how much ink to put on there. The more ink, the whiter the whitewash is going to be, and so forth. Now, if you lay it on super thick, it's going to take longer to dry. So, what I do is I just do little brush strokes with my blender pen, and then you can just kind of fill in that space. Now you wanna use a stamp set that is, like floral images work really well because it has like that image area where it has a little bit of lightness to it that you can color in. But all you do is just kind of paint the white ink right on here with your blender pen. And then depending on how much you pick up, you can just keep going. You don't have to uh, refill your ink each time. Now, I like to use a blender pen just for this technique. Like, I would not want to use this pen now with my watercolor pencils because it does leave white ink on the tip of your blender pen. So just kind of have a separate one that you put off to the side, maybe one that um, is not as juicy as a brand new one. Uh, obviously, you still want to have some of the blender pen solution in there, but if you um, if you have a separate one just for this technique, then you won't get white paint anywhere else on your projects that you don't want it. So it's very simple. You just take your paper and kind of turn it, paint your white on there, and when it dries, you can see I didn't do it very heavy, but you can see where it gives that white look to it. So we're just gonna paint. If you really like painting, this is a fun technique that you can do with stamps and ink. Just kind of a different way to think about your stamping style. So we're just gonna fill it in here. Have any of you guys done the whitewash technique? Did you like it? What kind of stamps did you use for it? Like I said, floral works really well. This Forever Fern set works great. There's um, that darkness and lightness to the images, so you can easily just color them in with the whitewash. Um, if you have the retired, it, it's sold out already from the last chance list, but the Sailing Home uh, stamp set, which has a lighthouse, that works really well with this technique. Now I got it a little thick on here, so I'm just gonna drag my blender pen over it because I don't want it to be too thick. Then it could take longer to dry. So we're just gonna paint here. Very easy technique to do. Now, I will tell you, I am not a painter by any means. I am not good at painting. But with this white and blender pen, it's very easy to just be able to drag the ink. And it's okay if you go outside of the lines. Uh, it just gives it more of that whitewash look. Like I said, I am not good at painting at all. I did an oil painting of some poppies and oof, 
not not the best it's in the back of my closet for a reason but <laughs> this white whitewash with the blender pen and the ink you just need a little bit of ink too you don't need a ton now when you're done with this I've done all your painting you can heat treat it to help depending on how thick of the ink you put on here but if you did it pretty thin it it tends to dry pretty quickly all right so here is my whitewash let me just some of this part is still kind of wet but you can see what it looks like here places are already drying so it just gives it a little bit of white it's not super obvious so if you do want more and more brightness and white you can always go back in and add more layer more of that white craft ink on top of there but i'm just gonna leave that one the way it is and we're gonna assemble our project i'm gonna put this off to the side in hopes that it dries just a little bit more while we work on the rest of our project all right from the Forever Fern stamp set, we have the uh, You Can Do This sentiment. We're gonna stamp that in soft succulent. Now, when you do the whitewash technique with the craft paint, you wanna do it on paper that that white is gonna show really, really well on. So your darks, your greens, uh, like your light colors, like petal pink, so saffron, those won't work very well because you know white on light yellow is very hard to see. So make sure to choose some darker colors and then that white will really pop up against it. All right, our soft succulent here. And I'm gonna tie my bow, wait for that to dry just a little bit longer. We have the Evening Evergreen Open Weave Ribbon. This is also carrying over to our annual catalog for next year, which I'm very excited for. I love this ribbon. These in colors are great and I am excited that they're getting to stay around for another year. So our open weave ribbon, we're just gonna tie in a quick bow. And with this ribbon, I found the best way to adhere it is a glue dot. Uh, Tombow multipurpose liquid glue, because it has that mesh in the middle, is going to ooze out the middle of it. So you don't wanna use liquid glue. With tape runner, it doesn't really stick too well. So glue dots is definitely the best way to go for this. All right, so we're not 100% dry here, but I'm still going to, I can still work with this and adhere it to my project. All right, on the back, we are gonna use dimensionals. I just have black ones here. It doesn't matter what color dimensionals you have, but we just wanna make sure that we don't smudge our paper. Again, once you're doing this, not in front of a live audience you can heat treat it you can wait for it to dry before assembling and if you want to add more white to it you can all right on the back we've got our stampin dimensionals and this is going to go in the lower right corner of our card there our sentiment, because this is already popped up one layer, we're just gonna add a little bit of liquid glue to the back side of the left side of our card. So just about halfway. You could add a dimensional there, but there's not a lot of room here for that. So just right onto our card. Our, oops, grab the wrong ribbon. That's the attached one. <laughs> and our glue dots where's my glue dots here there we go i'm gonna take my take your pick tool take a glue dot and roll it into a ball on the end of my take your pick tool pick up my ribbon and stick that right to my card now as a bit of oh, got a little bit of ink see that's why you want to wait until it's totally dry before assembling but as a finisher, I am using the brushed metallic adhesive back 
dots. Again, another item carrying over to our annual catalog. And I'm going to use these dots that are like a brushed color. They're like a darker gold. They're not super shiny. And we're just going to put two up here in the upper right. We want our focus to really be that white, but we just want a little bit of um, focus on this little shiny. But here is, get that white off the top there. But here is our first project featuring whitewash technique number one. Very, very simple to create. You don't have to be an expert painter to push this on. And once it's fully dry, it gives you this really fun, soft white onto your stamped images. So let me know what you guys think about this project. Uh, this whitewash technique is very fun and beautiful and I'm just going to put that off to the side so it can fully dry for later. All right. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Peggy, I'm glad you were able to join today. All right. Our next project is this one here. This one also uses the Forever Fern stamp set. This is using whitewash technique number two. And if you can color, you can create this project. Again, featuring two, where's my card kit? Oh, here it is. Two of the new 2224 in colors. So we are going to be using Orchid Oasis for our card base. This is again, eight and a half by five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And all the dimensions are on that free project PDF tutorial on my website, stampinblondie.com. All right, we have a piece of basic white cardstock and we're going to adhere that to our card base first. And on top, we're going to put the new six by six designer series paper. I really love this plaid, but when I put the card together, when I was designing it, I wanted to do the plaid, but it really took away from the whitewash. So I went with the polka dots. Now this is actually the starry sky color. Um, Orchid Oasis and starry sky go really, really well together. But before I add this down, we are going to wrap this is the starry sky sorry let me just make sure yeah starry sky one eighth of an inch metallic woven ribbon so you can see how shiny this is this is a really fun ribbon and i'm going to show you something fun to do with it right now okay so when you are doing ribbon that's this thin all you need to adhere it is scotch tape so we've got Goldie here, my trusty dachshund tape dispenser. And we're gonna take a piece of ribbon that's just a little bit longer than our piece here. And we're gonna use scotch tape to tape it on the back. So you won't see the backside. So scotch tape is perfect for this. There's no dry time and it is quick and simple. So we're just gonna wrap this around the back and take a piece of scotch tape, lay that down, make sure our metallic ribbon is straight across the front and tape that on the back there. Now this we're going to adhere down to our card base. So just a little bit of stamp and seal adhesive and that's gonna go, make sure my card's going the right way, right here in the middle. All right, our bow here, we're going to take about eight inches of this ribbon, eight, nine inches, and I'm gonna show you a fun technique with this new ribbon too. So this ribbon comes in all of the new in colors, and if you get the in color club, you get a roll of full roll of this ribbon each month and I should probably know how to tie it <laughs> it's such a delicate ribbon it's a lot thinner than our other ribbons that we've had before but it's really pretty I love this 
ribbon. And the, the my favorite color though, the Tahitian Tide in this metallic, it is, it is awesome. All right, we're gonna tighten it. We're gonna snip the ends. And because this is a woven ribbon, get that out of the way, you can take the ends and fray them just a little bit. So it kind of puffs up your ribbon and it just makes it extra sparkly. So you can see once you pull the ribbon apart, it has this like frayed end to it. So very fun. We're gonna also use a glue dot on this. Because this ribbon is thin, you wanna use a glue dot on it. It definitely with liquid glue, um, even the tiniest amount can ooze out the sides of this. So glue dots for the win on this. All right, with our taker pick tool and right there. So we've got our ribbon complete here. Now our whitewash technique. We are gonna take, this is that Orchid Oasis and our rectangle postage punch. This carries over to the new annual catalog and we are going to stamp our fern three times and then punch it out. So let's move some of this out of the way and keep that in frame so you guys can see that. Oh, that's our sentiment piece, we can't lose that. All right, our fern that we're gonna use is this size. And this time we are gonna use the Starry Sky ink pad. So we're mixing Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky to all of our card pieces here. And we're just gonna stamp three times right down the side. Now, if you've never had a brand new ink pad before, I just wanna give you guys a quick tip. I haven't done this with my ink pads yet, but on the back here are stickers that you can use on your ink pads. Here, I'll show you what they look like. So you can put on the front of your ink pad so you know what color it is. And then also right here on the inside, there's a blank one. So when it's open, if you have this next to your Orchid Oasis, it's very hard to tell what color is which. So there's labels on the back so that you can label your ink pads. Just a quick tip, I haven't done mine yet. I just took the plastic off most of them yesterday. So, <laughs> all right, our postage stamp, rectangular postage stamp punch. We're gonna punch out our ferns. Now we're gonna cut the end of the stem off, but that's okay because we only need to see the fern part here. Right. Now this whitewash technique, we've got our three pieces here. This is done by our watercolor pencils. So our watercolor pencils, the assortment number one, we have two assortments of watercolor pencils in our uh, annual catalog. Assortment number one comes with a Whisper White watercolor pencil. And just because these are watercolor pencils does not mean they have to be used for watercoloring. You can use these for just coloring with pencils. So that's what we're gonna do with our white watercolor pencil. So this gives that illusion of the whitewash technique without having to use the craft paint and the blender pen. So if you have, we used these in one of my classes a couple months ago, so if you attended the class, you may have this, but this is our assortment number one watercolor pencils. And that is how we create our second whitewash technique. Now, if you wanted to, you could come in here with a blender pen. I would not suggest watercolors or water coloring because this cardstock is not meant to watercolor on. It will pill, it will um, tear up your paper if too much water gets on there. But if you wanted to come in with an uninked blender pen, you can create this as well. All right, on the back of these, we're gonna add Stampin' Dimensionals. 
So we're just gonna add two. Now, if you like this postage stamp punch, I will tell you to purchase it now because it unfortunately is going up in price in our next annual catalog. So make sure to get that before May 3rd is when the new catalog starts. Now, what I'm doing here is I am laying out my punched pieces first before I adhere them down to my card. I just wanna make sure that my spacing is good before I adhere anything down. So we're gonna peel off the backs and put this onto our card base. I'm gonna lower them just a little bit. And that's gonna go right next to that one. And yes, nice and easy. This one is this, like I said, this the first one was the quote harder of the two. This one is the easier, but they're both really easy overall. All right, our last bit, Starry Sky and our Hello Sentiment. This is also in the Forever Fern stamp set, so it has some great sentiments to go along with the ferns. Um, I love a stamp set that has sentiments and images together. So this one is great because it has a mixture of fonts too. So our Hello, we're gonna stamp. And that's gonna go right in the middle here on our basic wipe. And we're gonna take our ends and we're just gonna cut them at an angle. And that's gonna have dimensionals on the back of it too. So here we go with the dimensional. And you can use black dimensionals on white cardstock. I just had a lot of black dimensionals left over so I need, and they were half used, so I need to go through them. But here is our second project featuring the whitewash technique. Like I said, this one's easier. They're both very easy though, and it is a great way to add a little pop of white to your projects. All right, let's bring in that first project that we created here today. Let me know which one is your favorite. Do you like the one with the colored pencil, Orchid Oasis and Starry Sky? Or is your favorite the whitewash technique with the craft ink and the blender pen here on our soft succulent paper? All right, everybody. Well, thank you once again for joining me for a week of Technique Tuesday. Make sure to join me next week on Monday as I create more during Makers Monday. If you are interested in my In Color Club, requesting a catalog, or signing up for my Hello Ladybug class, make sure to click the links in the description of this video once I'm done here tonight. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will 